Welcome guys, uh, so we're doing uh, my the fourth uh, traditional sealed all will be one. I should say fourth sealed, so I've been alternating between best of one and best of three. So this is the best of three version. Right. So, oh yes. So um, here are the rares, and this is a very familiar rare to me. I uh, played, had two games in a row where we're uh, against this uh, rare in my last run. This seems like a very strong card. So, Rear Evil Bane of Blade Hold, four mana for a three four. It's got something called Battle Cry, which means whenever this creature attacks, each other attacking creature gets plus one zero till end of the turn. So it's interesting. I'm not, I haven't actually seen that um, mechanic before, but it's probably from an older set, I, I'm guessing. Uh, at the beginning of combat on your turn, the next time target creature would deal combat damage to one or more players this combat, prevent that damage. If damage is prevented this way, create that many 1-1 one, one colorless and Phyrexian Might artifact creature tokens with Toxic 1, and this creature can't block. So it can turn any uh, combat damage to players into that n that number of Phyrexian Mites. So it, it make, can make a bunch of tokens. Can tar he can target himself. So you can make three tokens if he gets through. So that's that's insanely good, I would say. Right, we have Lawn's Wellsprings. This is actually my third copy of this one already, but I haven't I haven't used it yet. It's awkward because it's a white card that does um, oil counters. So oil is mostly red, green, and blue. So you. Um, this is a bit of an anomaly. You well, you probably what you want is that you know those red cards that put oil counters on other permanents. But uh, so this one, it, when it triggers, when a creature you, uh, it, uh, when a creature dies, you you get to scry one, or you put an oil counter on it. You can tap it with with one mana, remove two oil counters to draw a card. It's a it's a card draw engine. So for every two creatures that die, it's going to let you draw a card. Uh, creatures that you control. So um, probably pretty good. It's not quite a one-way howling mine. You, you need to have a bunch of creatures die for this to uh, work. Oh wow, Staff of Completion. This does a lot of things. So three mana. You can pay one life to destroy target permanent you own. Pay two life to add one mana of any color. Cool, so it's mana fixing. Pay three life to proliferate. Or pay four life to draw a card. So here's a reason to uh, have a lot of life gain in your deck, I suppose. And then, uh, so all of those uh, life costs, uh, you tap the stuff, and then uh, you can pay five mana to untap stuff of completion. Uh, yeah, that seems uh, pretty interesting. So that's another card draw engine. Four life to draw a card. It's quite steep. On the other hand, a lot of people are trying to kill you with poison counters. You might have four life, or even eight life, um, that you could spend, potentially, in some situations. Okay, now I've seen this guy, Bloated Contaminator, so, yep, yeah, four four trample for three mana, uh, with toxic one. When it, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, proliferate. 
Um, so I guess the toxic goes off first, then you pro proliferate, and you get you give them another poison counter. I assume that's how that works. Okay, here we have a rare land, the seed core, it's a sphere. So tap for colorless, or tap to add one mana of any color. Spend this mana only to cast Phyrexian creature spells. Well, that's cool. Most most of the creatures are Phyrexian. And that's, that's a Phyrexian Knight, Phyrexian Beast. That's good. And then Corrupted, if your opponent's got three poison. Tap. Uh, target 1-1 one, one creature gets plus 2, plus 1 till end of turn. Uh, yeah. So, in other words, target Phyrexian Might <laughs> gets plus 2, plus 1. Um, yeah. Not bad. Nice bit of mana fixing. So we've also got one Staff of Completion for um, if you want to spend pay two life to do mana fixing and, and ramp as well. I've seen this as well. I had this before. Encroaching Mica Synth. Non land permanents you control are artifacts in addition to the other types. Uh, same is true for permanent spells you control and non land permanent cards you, you own that are on the battlefield. So this is a combo card that's going to work. Uh, in constructed, it's, it's places in constructed. It's not really going to work in limited. You'd have to be quite lucky, very lucky, to get the right cards that work with this, that ca care about artifacts. So, Shuffling. Right. Now, uh, usually I uh, have a look, I do a search for some keywords. I might leave that till the end. Um, so I'll do, th um, I'm just, I'm going to use uh, the bread acronym to sort through these cards. So Bombs, removal, evasion, aggro, dross. I think we'll just look at. We're, we're just really interested in the first three. I think bombs, removal, and evasion are uh, are good enough. Calling chorus is quite good. This is you know this is an efficient card. It's an aggro card. You would probably play it. Zealot's conv conviction <coughs> is quite good. So it's nice and cheap, and it's got flash. If they're corrupted. You're giving something first strike, plus two, plus one, and first strike. So it's a nice a combat trick, but uh, it's not. Uh, I draw a distinction between removal and combat tricks, so I'll leave this out. Uh, right, bladed ambassador, Phyrexian soldier. Oh well, here is a white card that comes with an oil counter. That makes him indestructible. That's a that's a good value creature. Um, I think that's worth considering. I think it's not in any of the categories I suggested, but a creature that can just stick around, survive the first uh, removal spell. Uh, seems pretty good value. Okay, complete devotion. Another combat trick, and it can be a cantrip as well. If, it, if you're running a lot of toxic, you want to play this. So we have another toxic creature. So first strike on attacking makes it bit harder to deal with, so it's pseudo evasion. There's the Norn's Wellspring. Uh, maybe that's worth considering. That's that's going to draw you some cards, I think, quite often. Right, this makes it two three for three mana. Okay. 
So actually, uh, I notice we have a few equipment things. This one's quite expensive though. Four three for five mana. Okay, against all odds, four mana. You can exile something and then return it. So can, you can protect a creature or um, and also trigger a come into play effect again. And you can return target. Oh wait, you can't protect a creature. What am I talking about? It's sorcery speed. So is it pretty much just going to be for that um, for a come into play effect? And then return target artifact or creature card one of any three or less from graveyard to the battlefield. But uh, I'd say it's quite pricey. It's four mana is quite pricey if you only want to do one of those effects. So you need that combination of come into play effects and cheap things to bring back. Uh, Basilica Shepherd has a really good come into play effect. And it's got evasion. So this is really good. We'll include that one. Mirren Bardish, 5 mana, seems a lot to pay for a 4-3 creature, but then you get to um, you get to keep the equipment afterwards. So it gives you, gives you a bit of value, it's a, cre yeah, it's a sort of creature value, these uh, 4 Mirrodin equipments. And then Apostle of Evasion is good, it's, it's another evasion creature and it can get double strike. So. Uh, now, what's missing from white? We've been through the white cards. We, we've got do have evasion, but we don't have any removal cards at all. We do have just a couple of combat tricks. So it's not a lot to work with. Uh, if we look at blue, so Aspirants is set. It's another, it's another combat trick. Glistening Seer. Yep, I quite. This is quite nice. It's uh, good with uh, other oil synergies. Getting to scry every turn with this, or well, for three turns, is pretty good. But uh, it's not that interesting, I suppose. Surgical skull bomb. I think this is pretty good. So it's a sort. It's a pseudo removal card. You get to bounce something and you you draw a card. So I think we think about that one. Prologue to Phyresis is just a sort of win condition card. It, it adds poison, a poison counter. And it's a cantrip, so it's not really affecting the board state. So we, we uh, skip this one. Right, Thrumming Bird, 1-1 one, one flying. And when it deals combat damage, proliferate. Because this has got flying, this, this gets the nod. It's got evasion. It's quite a, a useful uh, ability as well. Okay, another flyer. It's only one four. It's got three oil counters. Ah, uh, that's right. You can give it plus one, minus one. You can make it a four one if you spend all three oil counters. But we like this. It's a flyer. Okay, Tamiyo's logbook for three mana. Ah, uh, so this is the, one of the artifact synergy cards. It costs one less for each other artifact you control. And I believe Phyrexian Mites are artifacts. So, uh, yeah, potentially this is pretty great. Just drawing an extra card every turn. If you can get a nice um, discount worth mentioning it's an artifact itself so it's the mi at minimum it's it's gonna at, at maximum I mean it's gonna cost you five mana to draw a card so yeah let's let's think about that that's uh, that's potentially a bomb if you can get the right synergy going oh yeah this makes everything artifacts so that actually goes really well with Tamiyo's logbook but it's a bit of a uh, Bit of a combo card, it's kind of not so good on its own. Okay, this can come into play and proliferate. Big chunky blocker, 2 5 as well. 
Okay, you this can put an instant or sorcery on top of your library. That's it's not quite card advantage, but it's uh, it's card selection. You can get something very useful again. What what though? What's missing uh, are useful instants and sorceries so far. Meld web strider. Oh, there's an this is another artifact vehicle. So five mana for a five five. Vigilance uh, with crew three. That seems a bit steep to me. Uh, what else does it do? It enters the battlefield with an, with an oil counter. Remove an oil counter from the strider. It becomes an artifact creature at the end of turn. So it gets one. It comes with one free attack. So if yeah, five five vigilance for five mana. Uh, maybe that's okay. Uh, it's usually white has the big vigilance creatures, so sort of four, 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 that kind of thing. So maybe uh, not that amazing. Just, just okay. It's a, it's a big creature. Um, and this is draw three, proliferate for five mana. That's that's a pretty st standard card draw card. So I'd say uh, I'm not not blown away by the by our blue cards here. Missing uh, removal, really. Right now, black. A couple of copies of the dross pits, so it's just quite nice to sack land later in the game for a card. This is okay. This is a good start. Annihilating glare, removal card. We like this. Bilious Skull Dweller. Um, actually pretty nice. 1-1 one, one Death Touch for 1 mana. I go ahead and count Death Touches as removal spells. I think I think that's, that's pretty good. So black is looking like the colour <laughs> right now. Uh, the Dross Skull Bomb, you can sack it to do a Raise Dead. And draw a card. So that's quite good value. That uh, is sort of a cantrip effect. It's a cantrip. It's f in total, it's four mana to uh, raise dead and draw a card. So that's good. We probably want to play that, but um, we're not. We don't care about it right now. Duress is a risky card to play when. Most people are going to be playing a lot of creatures, maybe 17 creatures. I think we skip this. Whisper of the Dross. It turns out there are quite a few prominent one toughness creatures in the set. And the proliferate is quite potentially useful. I think it's it's worth considering that one. An anoint with affliction is the other big removal, common black removal card. Yeah, black's looking good. Okay, Necrogen Communion. Yeah. This this doesn't quite cut it. So it's, it, you can't cast it at flash speed, so it's a good chance you get two for one when you try and cast this on something. Uh, for, offer Immortality. Now this is... It's, it's a combat trick. But it does Death Touch and Indestructible, so it's also a protection spell. I'd argue this this is the this is a really good combat trick that's worth considering. Sheldred's Edict. Uh, yeah, it's nice you can make them sacrifice a non-token creature. Or a to creature token, or a planeswalker. So this is this is a pretty good removal spell. I've had problems with this in previous uh, sealed decks because I'm usually playing black and white, and white in white I've got the pacifism effect, and then it feels bad to play any kind of sacrifice effect. 
forced sacrifice when they can just sacrifice the passive the creature with pacifism but we, we don't have that problem this time so i think that's good especially when you've got lots of other black removal cards ambulatory edifice oh wow okay this is not bad so it's a creature that can give something minus one minus one for two life goes it very nicely with whisper of the dross can kind of upgrade this into a removal spell <laughs> suddenly once you can take out two toughness i think this is uh definitely a good another good reason to play black cutthroat centurion uh, i'm not too impressed with it's just it's a sacrifice outlet infectious inquiry yep draw and give people a poison counter stinging hive master isn't it interesting that this doesn't have flying or it doesn't make things with flying either um it's good value it, it uh, when it dies it leaves a creature behind so it, it's okay uh, Shelter's Head Cleaver is good because it's got menace. It's it's an evasion creature. We like that. The Gulping Scrap Trap is I think this is this is all right. This is a filler creature for the for the top end and and uh, for the prol proliferate deck. And we have Cruel Grimnark. So this has Death to Death Touch, but it's a six mana creature, so Death Touch is just not relevant. And you can make someone discard a card, but once you once you got six mana for this, your your opponent might be might have emptied his hand. So I don't think that's particularly interesting. Rhea, Rhea Evil is pretty amazing. So there's actually so much removal in black, we might just go black white, which seems to be. The majority of uh, the majority of my opponents are black white. I, most most of my decks are black white. Uh, but let's look at red. Two old counters. So this this does a bit of discard and draw. It's uh, it's all right. That's a three one creature. Discard draw two. Makes equipment cheaper. It has menace, so that's evasion. Let me just. This can stop things from blocking. If you can get oil counters onto it, whenever anything dies, it gets an oil counter. It's sort of two oil counters to remove blocking. So this is sort of evasion. Uh, yeah, let's let's think about that. And this has trample, which is evasion. Okay, I think I think a three-two haste is pretty good. I think haste is like an evasion ability, and this it has got a whole oil um, mechanism here. This this looks like so you can put this on the oil on artifacts or creatures you control, and you can bounce it to your hand, which is amazing. So yeah. Five damage to target creature or planeswalker. That permanent loses indestructible until end of turn. Wow, that's very interesting. Why have I not seen this card before? So this is a great removal card for three mana. Okay. Volt Charge, another good removal card. Okay. Chimney Rabble. Okay, it makes a... You get a bonus creature. You get two of those. That seems like pretty good value. 3-3 three, three Haster for four. Yeah, that's quite good. Uh, Oxida Finisher, Affinity for Equipment, yeah. yeah. Red is not too shabby. Just not 
everything that has cost three mana. It's sort of uh, <laughs> kind of a bit of a problem when everything is the same amount of any. <coughs> So this has some good stuff, doesn't it? We have Bloated Contaminator. I suspect we we might consider going three colours. Black, white, green. Because we do have a we've noticed we do have a couple of mana fixing things. Right, carnivorous canopy. Uh destroy artifact, enchantment or creature with flying. Uh, there's quite a few artifacts in the set. There's a few flying creatures like uh, Basilica Shepherd. I think the, the flyers are quite popular, so I think this is a good removal spell. Okay, this guy's a three mana Death Toucher. Uh, might be a tad too expensive for a Death Toucher when it's just on the ground. That said, I think, yeah, it's worth considering. Maze's Mantle. It's a protection spell, but it costs three, which is a bit expensive. Viral Spawning's quite good value, so this can get you a couple of three threes. Uh, yeah, this has... Yeah, basically this is a five four Vigilance for four mana, uh, which is just all right. We have a Venomous Brutalizer. Okay. 4-4 four, four for 4 mana. That's quite nice. And it's got Toxic 3. And it can proliferate. It's quite nice. It's quite nice. So a good, good, a good value green creature. It is double green. Oh, Gorgia Troll. Yep. Yeah. Bit of um, replaces itself if you've got an oil permanent. Uh, that's quite good, but it's just yeah, you know, it's very dependent on if you can get your oil permanents in play. We don't have the uh, the one mana uh, elf who untaps land. We're using oil counters. That's usually that's usually the uh, the green oil uh, card I, I play. Okay, it's Sky Scythe Engulf. Engulf, it's very expensive, it's 6 mana, but it does have reach. I think reach is very important, so that's worth considering. And the Silvok Battle Chair, I nearly, nearly played this last time, I, I tried it, nearly tried green red, but um, because plus 4, plus 4 and trample is pretty good. So this, it's, um, yeah, this is quite good because it's, uh, it can give anything evasion and then we've got the slaughter singer which is a very good reason to play green white we like that a lot so yeah it's uh, tribal lord for toxic basically that's for two mana that's pretty amazing um right actually it won't add those yet uh no uh, yeah Oh, that's really nice. We've got two Terramorphic Expanses. That's really going to help us uh, fit three colours in the deck. Uh, we definitely want the Seed Core. Okay, Equipment. One to play and one to equip. It's not too bad. I don't I don't usually play equipment. Yeah, custodian. It's a bit of scrying. We've got a staff of completion. Two two life to ramp. Get some get some extra mana. Four life to draw a card. Yep, I think I think we like that. 
I'm sort of thinking, how much life gain have I got in my deck? How am I going to pay for all of these things? Uh, probably the answer is not very much or zero life gain. There's the Mur Kinsmith. And we only we do have another uh, you have a, a mirror custodian as well. So cards that find other cards are pretty good value, uh, but I don't think we I don't think we play these ones. It's the most mirror I've ever had in a, in a sealed deck. But there you go, and. I think we've seen everything. I always just double check here. Yeah, these are the. Uh, actually, yes, we probably want to look at those. So, yeah, black, very strong. White and green, pretty good. Red, pretty good as well. Blue is an easy cut. So. We'll drop that straight away. And the problem with red, they're all the same amount of value. And it's all oil uh, synergy, so I don't think we're doing that either. Something very interesting happened. I went down to 40 cards there when I cut red. Do that and suggest lands. That's sh yeah, forty-one cards. Okay. Uh, of course, we do have a we have a bunch of other cards we haven't added yet that uh, might fit in the deck really well. So we want to try and. It looks like we're going toxic, so we want to fit Venomous Brutalizer in. And Viral Spawning. So I think, yes. I don't think, even though this goes with toxic, I, I don't think it's very playable. Same for this. Uh, yeah, that's we'll just add that because it's another toxic card. Proliferate is kind of good as well. We might want that. Yeah, probably want those. Uh, we are playing toxic, so this is a, a good combat trick. Okay, so that's brought us up to 49 cards. Oh, look, we, we missed that one. So I'll just have a little pass through, seeing if there's anything e okay, that's easy to cut from the deck. Whisper of the Dross, arguably that's, that's a cuttable removal spell. Uh, this guy's really good, but he doesn't have Toxic. Uh, let's let's see what the mana curve four eight eight three three four. Uh, maybe L Norn's Wellspring is a little bit too involved. Maybe we, uh, takes a few turns before you can even use it. I think if you're dropping Whisper of the Dross, then you probably drop Ambulatory Edifice. Good card though, but we'll, because we're doing it going th three colors, we just got too many options, if anything. No 
maybe we can't fit that in. Uh, sky Siding Golfer, I guess not. And Silver Battle Chair, I guess not. And we're pretty close to a deck. What we haven't thought about is which which colour are we splashing? Uh, it, in fact, it looks like we might be splashing green. Which means we might have to say goodbye to Venomous Brutalizer. Because in white we've got the early crawling choruses. And the built in black, we've got Bilious Skull Dweller we want to play on turn one. Uh, so I think cut the double green card. That's the uh, that's the tricky bit. Okay. So that's that's a pretty decent first pass. I will uh, call it end of part one there, and have a bit of a think and uh, possibly make a few more changes. Uh, thanks for watching so far. And I'm back. So, um, no changes to the deck. Uh, I'm just going to go with this. I have a bad habit of just um, making the deck and then actually putting off playing the games. Uh, so I'm just I'm not going to think about it anymore. I'm just going to get in there and play some games. Whatever will be, will be. So... Yeah, I think I've I just start I've started taking it too seriously and uh you know, we're you know getting nervous about the games and I think I've got this idea in the back of my mind, um that I want to get lots of gems and go infinite playing sealed, but I think it's it's quite a silly idea really. I think it, we're just sort of learning the uh the set, learning to play the new cards. I don't think you could have any expectations of uh, doing well. It's uh, got to remember it's just a bit of fun at the end of the day. Uh, of course, we're playing best of three. We've got uh, we've got a chance to sideboard. There's so a few cards we've left out that might be good. Okay, well, we won the uh, coin flip. And we have two one drops. That's a nice first start. So, we've got white and black. We don't have green for the Slaughter Singer. We have a Bladed Ambassador. Interesting. And we have Shouldred's Edict. That does seem like quite a first start, so... Let's keep that. See if we can put my, the opponent under some pressure. This guy, of course, doesn't have toxic, but he seems pretty good. So it looks like my opponent. Mulligan. Oh, it's so laggy. Right. Okay, we could could play a tap land here. I'm going to swing in first. Tap land and crawling chorus. Well, we have, don't have a three drop, you see, so I'm, I'm thinking we just play this guy now. Because that's potentially three extra damage. This is Bladed Ambassador. Okay. We've hit our green mana. That's very good. Okay. So. This is one mana of any color. This means I can't play Crawling Chorus. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I do have a Shield Receded. That's a, yeah, that's a good play. Non-token creature, right? Non-token creature. That says creature token. This is non-token creature. That's the one I want. You don't want to get that wrong. Oh, 
it's a 3-3, three, three. nice. Okay, we could play that. Yeah, yeah, we can totally play this and attack with everything. These guys are kind of expendable, they get replaced. So I think it's... Uh, keeps the pressure up. Oh, something is getting killed. It's that one. Yep, that's that's it. Makes sense to me. And that is a blocker for Bladed Ambassador. I don't think I've got ossification yet. Okay, over to my turn. Let me just double check everything's working. This is something I'm always very paranoid about. Okay, no, it's fine. Right. Okay, we have a, a cool Death Touch Basilisk. We could tap three of our lands, sacrifice that as well. Um. I'm thinking Bladed Ambassador just goes in. Yeah, give him indestructible till end of turn, please. We'll play a Basilisk, I think. And, uh, and you can what you can say is it's taken out one of its blockers. This thing can't block. And I'll pump something, so that'll be... Okay, the uh, token pumps. It's not a good trade with a Death Touch. Uh, but I might chuck this guy in the way. down his poison grabbing. Oh yeah, this is good. So he, we've got him to corrupt it. The seed core can um, make one of my dudes a 3-2. Which is amazing. One of my 1-1s, one specifically speaking. So, uh, Swing in with everything. It is instant speed, but it's too late to worry about it. <laughs> uh, Got to. I think I find I have to I have to read these things twice. Okay. Right, next to damage. So, let's tap this thing. See if it works. I 
think it does. That's good. And he's on six poison. I'm going to play my swamp. Oh, uh, no, no, no. I'm silly. I've played a land. Okay, so I think we're definitely sacrificing this next turn. Right, this is an amazing card. <laughs> I, just <laughs> I thought, yeah, that sounds good when I looked at it earlier, and yeah, that's awesome. Oh, yeah, draw a card, get, get in a bit of extra damage. Yeah, that seems pretty sweet. I, uh, in the midweek magic, I just played against someone. He he drew three, four of these uh, and played them. Uh and just blew up all my creatures, basically, in, with combat tricks. In the top 17 cards, I think. Oh, we have a removal spell. That is tremendous. Okay, I think you, I play this, pay three life and proliferate. After... So I get rid of his blocker, and I can get through with three poison. Yeah. I keep forgetting that this is exile. I've been trying to um, respond to this with... Uh okay, well, he got me there. That one is... Out of here. Uh, I still think we play Staff of Completion and Proliferate for 3 life. Giving someone a Poison Counter for 3 life is Absolute bargain. He's on eight. Yeah, okay, good. But that's just game one. We're in a best of three. So this is where you got to worry about your... Uh, you have a, a half-hour chess clock that's ticking. Uh, we want to look at our relevant colours. Yeah, white. There is a combat trick if we want, if we want to chuck it in. Oh, we... we I'm using this combat trick as well. I suppose it's pretty good. It, it draws a card. Um, I don't really know what I'd add. Do we need... Ah, Whisper of the Dross is definitely very good against some decks. Jurass can be good. Mazes Mantle, but we won't change anything. And I'm back, guys. So Bit of bad news, my computer just um, shut down after that first game and uh, it, it took about 15 minutes just to uh, log back in. I've got a few technical problems it looks like, so we timed out and we've ended up with a, a match loss there, which is a shame. But it's uh, motivated me, I've, uh, I've had a break and I've um, tinkered with a few settings, um, let's see graphics settings. Well, this was at low anyway. Um, I've changed my graphics card setting to from 85 to 60 millihertz uh, refresh rate. So that's that was a recommendation I saw. So I'm, I'm going to give it a try. And uh, hopefully, the get, hopefully we can uh, last an entire match. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, play the next game. I'm fully prepared for a 0-2 now, obviously. 
my hardware is not up to the task of uh, recording matches at the moment, but uh, we will try. Okay, we're lucky, we get to play first. Okay, good lands. We've got our really good, nice rare. Oh, that's right, we are three colours, we're missing black. So that's a bit of a bit of a drawback. We've got a three drop we can play. And we've got Staff of Completion, which can be a sort of emergency uh, mana fixing. That could be the black mana I need. So we'll keep this. That's really nice. We've top decked a two drop. Very, very happy about that. You can see I don't know how laggy it is. It's just not running very well on my machine at the moment. Are you going to block? Yes. Fair. Fair enough. Alright, we'll play our Basilisk. We've also got... You can just, you can just play Staff of Completion, tap it for a mana and play the Skull Dweller. It's an option next turn. Oh, he can, uh, he's got his flyer, that's, that's nice. Well, that's nice, we, we can get our swamp. But I do not think he has any good blocks here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and attack with both. And he's a toxic deck, so that makes me feel a little bit more confident about spending my life points on mana. Because he's obviously going for um, poisoning. And we'll play this guy for two life. That. And it be eventually becomes a 3 3. That's the deal with this one. Rib skiff, nice. That's a bit of card draw. So it's got crew 3. He can't crew it yet. So there is an option here for offer immortality. Uh, I'm just thinking we've got so this guy. Well, we'll be able to attack next turn if we play him now, and we can maybe target. A bilious skull dweller or something. It's 
Right, so we kept the uh, cleansing raptor back. Right, yeah, so that damage was prevented and it made a, a, a mite, so it's questionable whether that was worth doing, because you can obviously block this mite with the raptor. Slaughter Singer, that's a nice one for him. Pumps things when uh, when he attacks. So that'll be three damage. Oh, nice. Okay, Ruthless Predation gets him. Fair enough. Yeah, there's nothing I can do about that. This doesn't... do anything. Okay, my turn. So I think swing it like that. I think I'd like to kill the slaughter singer, so I'm going to offer immortality that way. Uh, we could hold the swamp. No, let's play the swamp and we'll sack the, the dross pits at the end of his turn. Because we can pay three life to proliferate if we want to give him an extra poison counter. We'll think about that. This thing is, is going to be 3-3 uh, three, three next turn as well, so then that's a bit of a problem for me. Oh, he has a very big creature. Okay. So that's a 6-6 six, six trampler. So I'm thinking we can't really afford now to spend life points. Uh, and we definitely want to sacrifice this. And we have that to sacrifice later on. Bladed Ambassador's a good draw, so this is a, uh, this can get indestructible. So this is basically a 3-3 creature. Uh, I could swing in with the Death Touchers. I will take potentially a lot of damage. Possibly just this 1-1 one, one Death Toucher. Basilisk could trade off with the Rebel. That's, that's going to win 
the game for him quite quickly. Get him to five poison counters. Uh, we'll have a bladed ambassador. And I think we'll play the planes and then we'll sacrifice this at the end of his turn. So, uh, pay three life, proliferate. Gets another oil counter on that. So it will actually survive. That's quite interesting. Can I afford to pay three life? That's the next question. So actually, yeah, he is the same colours. He's splashing black. Okay, Maze's mantle gets that to 4-4. Four, four. So, yeah, that's going to kill me quite quickly. So we're thinking he's getting through with 7 damage this turn. Uh, so... I think we will... Sacrifice the Hunter Maze first. Okay. Right. Pass the blockers. Basilisk goes there. We take seven. We go to six. If we want to proliferate, we go to three, uh, but then we die next turn. So I think we just, yeah, we can't proliferate. But we also, that would put him on six poison counters. He's only got one blocker. And I'll get through with two poison. Kind of very complicated. Um, this could stop another point of damage. I don't even take six. That might be important. Uh, so I can do seven and get through with how many poison counters? I think I can get him to nine poison and then he wins, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I think I think that's what's going to happen. Okay, I'm going to just block like that. Maybe I need... Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to block like that. Silvok battle chair as well can be re-equipped for seven, and he does have seven, so he's got lethal next turn. Okay, I did not think of that. Did not think of that. I will admit. Um, right, I think pay four life, draw a card. This thing has hexproof now forever. I didn't realize that that's permanent hexproof. Um. So I think we do this. Draw a card. No, we were too late. <laughs> we were too late. But, wow. Yeah, this card is actually very good, Maze's Mantle, I think. I, I was just reading it again. And, yeah, it's... If it... you, Okay, no, no. It's, it is Hexproof to lens a turn. I didn't misread that. It's just... Um, Right, so we think we we uh, we just lose this, unfortunately, now. Um, but never mind. We'll um, 
think attack with a bilious skull dweller. Uh, right, five, if we've got five mana, I'm just thinking tapping this to draw a card, just to try and find a removal spell. Tell you what, let's do that at instant speed. I can't think of a five mana removal spell. I'm just going to play this guy. I don't know my removal spells well enough, but we'll end the turn there. And just see if he equips the battle chair, because that's that is obviously a win if he does that. Yeah. So then we we're dead. We're a hundred percent dead. So we draw a card for four life. Fingers crossed, it's something good. <laughs> oh, it's sorcery speed. Right. You see, this is why you need to know your your removal spells. Could have done that in my turn, I'd have, I might have got him. Anyway. Right. It's funny, it comes down to these, these little things now and again. But we got to see the Staff of Completion in action. Now I'm a bit worried it's paused. Is it going to crash again? Now we have our own copy of uh, this card. Maze's Mantle. Uh, <laughs> is it so good that we want to play it? Is Staff of Completion any good? Yeah, I think that's convinced me Maze's Mantle is maybe worth playing. It's just, what do we drop? Carnivorous Canopy is actually really good because we can kill a flyer with that. We could take out the top end, the six drop. Yeah, it's a good flyer. Uh, but I feel like we've got good enough things. Yeah. I was going to double check everything's working. Yeah, it does seem to be working. Okay. Check my CPU temperature. Okay. 70 degrees. Not good, but... Let's see if we can make it through another game. So we've got green. We don't have any green mana. We've got a two drop and a nice combat trick to go with it. I think we, we have to keep it. I think getting two colours out of three is pretty good. Oh, he's, he's going to use that equipment. Oh, we've got the nice green white two drop. We can't play yet. Hopefully we get to use this before he dies. I don't know what this is. Okay. Instead you get one poison counter and you can't get additional point counter. The living cure. Okay, that's nice. We've got a tapped green mana. Okay, we're going to sort of... Uh, right. The trouble is, she can get. To, she can now get to five toughness with the injector, so my combat trick won't work. I'm just going to just reveal the fact I've got a combat trick by doing that. It was obvious, wasn't it? Now, uh, do I want to draw another card with this? Yeah, because I've got nothing better to do, actually, this turn with the mana. I want to draw another card. I want to get to my next thing. Okay. That's a 
five. Uh, oh yeah, because it got toxic. It's got got that. Nice. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we've got the carnivorous canopy. I guess we want to play a bloated contaminator. That seems pretty good. Better check the time. I am thinking a bit too much. Yeah, we used 14 minutes that first game. We've actually used 10 more minutes than my opponent. Uh, yeah, bloated contaminator, please. Because then we can potentially double spell next turn. But isn't that nice to have the actual <laughs> living cure so that reduces your poison intake to one per turn? Seems quite good in this uh, metagame to get that in your sealed deck. I wonder if he sideboards that in against uh, Toxic. But no, it's probably still the same deck because he is splashing black. If I understand this right, he only gets one poison counter a turn. He's got another equipment card. That's amazing, right? Okay, we want to play an untapped land here. Uh, yeah, he's obviously blocking. Yeah, he's uh, with uh, a 3 5. He does respect my bloated contaminator. But this will pump hit to 5 5. Let's read this. Infested Flesh Cutter gets plus two power. One, one, Phyrexian Might, Artifact Creature Token. Okay, the Contaminator could attack. We don't have green mana. So, yeah, that was, that was my misplay. I had to play the forest in my hand. For some reason, I played the plains. Never mind. It happens. So, uh, c Contaminator swings in. Okay, I guess we kill the Living Cure, because that's that card's kind of annoying. turn there. So if we remember, we dropped our 6 drop from the deck. So I think we can sacrifice this Dross Pits for a card um, right away. Yep, that gets toxic. And okay, yeah, it doesn't, this doesn't have to attack to give the boost, of course. So Go up to Toxic 2. Nice combination. This this guy pumps things up. This guy pumps things up. And now he's got a 3-3. Three, three. Okay. Nice. And that's getting equipped. To be a nice big 3. Another big 3-5 three, blocker. Okay. Right, let's sack this. Get a card. I like how he's got two equipment cards. Loads of creatures. Uh, interesting. Maze's Mantle. Uh, now, we can't double block, double spell this turn, so we'll play the Terramorphic Expanse. Obviously, green looks very important. We've got a handful of green cards. I think I will get another forest out. Actually, no, let's get a swamp out because we've got a forest in hand. 
Uh, we can hold up Maze's Mantle, or we could just play Viral Spawning. could take out the, the, the glider. That is sorcery speed, of course. I think I will go for a viral spawning of my own. And uh, no attacks. So that's going to be toxic 2. Put it on the flyer, and that's going to get me to three. Okay, and that's going to be four damage. He gets a might now with that. That gets flashback now. That goes back on there. Sure. Okay. We have a staff of completion, which is it feels quite dubious at the moment. I think it's time to just knock out his flyer, which is just gradually going to kill me. Um, I can proliferate and give him a poison token, which is quite cool. And I can get another 3-3 three, three out. Or I could... Yeah, I think that's the best thing to do. And no attacks. And then we just... Yeah, we just defend. And from next turn we're going to be holding up Maze's Mantle Mana. And try and get a blowout when he uh, plays his next removal spell. Okay, cool. We can dig more lands out of the deck. That is a good thing. Get our plates. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, no, we do have a forest. I'm just thinking, yeah. Yeah, we want to hold up Maze's Mantle. We have six mana. We can play a Staff of Completion and still have Maze's Mantle mana. And we're, we're going to use this defensively only, I think, in case he decides to blow up one of my guys. I mean, I think I like this bit of equipment because it makes mites good. It's good if you've got um, flyers and things. But I do have this. I'm not playing it, the uh, prosthetic injector. But it's uh, it's cheap to play, cheap to equip. So it's I guess it's playable. Um, just don't like including things that aren't creatures or removal spells. Okay, so that gets him a 1-1. One, one. That becomes a 6-6. Six, six. Now, how happy are we to trade both of these guys for this guy? Um, problem, right. Just thinking there, if he... He can only remove one of these guys. I've got the Maze's Mantle to protect them. So, yeah, the, tr the trouble is I can't play Maze's Mantle first in case he does have targeted removal. But he just re-equips them onto this guy next turn. So that feels quite bad. Um, 
I'm going to take the risk because I think I'm losing if I don't do this. And we'll just see if he's got instant speed removal. Then he just wins. Okay. Oh, okay, right. No, I, I get it. He's removed that at instant speed, so it's still the the trade. Right, that makes sense. Okay. It's odd how good equipment is sometimes. <laughs> but it obviously, this is the game where he's drawn creatures to go with his equipment. I'm always worried I just won't draw the creatures. If I like use up creature slots for equipment. And he's got removal as well, so it's all it's all coming together for him nicely. Uh okay, my turn. Crawling chorus. I think we're gonna have a bit of a problem here, so we're gonna draw something else. That's really good. Okay, Death Touch. Um, keep the Death Touch on blocking. See, this is a good blocker, so we're not going to attack. But it looks like... Yeah, I don't think I can win this game and then win another game in nine minutes. So I think I think this is the zero two, unfortunately. I think this deck seems to be working quite well. Yeah, he's gonna send in the kind of expendable mites that are gonna make more mites. It's pretty nice. Okay, so we get some mites. All of these get pumped up as well. I forgot about that. So that's a 4-4. Four, four. That passed the blockers. Kill the 4-4. Four, four. And then, obviously, these... Um, take 2 poison and 6 damage, which is pretty bad. So... Yeah, I think the uh, the equipment is is just uh, winning this. This this one though is an insane piece of equipment. Infested flesh cutter. Uh, do I just have to start trading off two twos just to survive a bit longer? I think possibly I do because I don't want to go down to four life points. Might be a mistake, but let's let's do that anyway. And he has combat tricks, of course. He has the Maze's Mantle there. Of course he does. He's got everything. doing a good job. I guess uh, I've underrated that card. Pre a pretty strong defensive card for uh, you know, these kinds of matchups. What I feel though, the reason I'm not playing it is because I, I feel like I'm coming ag up against a lot of removal. So yeah, the Staff of Completion isn't doing, isn't doing anything for me really. It's because it's just costing too much life. When you're under the hammer, you don't want to spend four life to draw a card. It's uh, a bit iffy. We did play our rare in the first game, and of course it got uh, blown up immediately. So 
So, at least I've managed to get my best cards. Okay, so, uh, we just die, don't we? I think. Let me just see. We can block that one. Just chomp block there. We are in damage terms. We're taking seven. Oh, that's two, isn't it? Two mites. We're taking nine damage. We're taking, I think, three. No, that's oh, that's toxic three. So that's that's five poison. These guys. So I've got to block a at least one poison, dude. Uh, if I do that, I'll get four poison, right? just about survive and I'll take seven damage but it's interesting that in game one if I knew my outs if I knew what removal cards I was looking for and whether they were sorcery or instant speed I'd have obviously tapped that during my turn and drawn the removal I needed for the flyer. So there was a chance to win game one. Let's see if uh, it lets me um, tap staff of completion. Let's resolve all. Boom, boom, boom. Pay four life, please. Yeah. Okay. Well, we got the uh, the zero two. Uh, we did have technical difficulties that kind of ruined my first match, where I was one game up. But on the plus side, I've. Uh, had a look at uh, changing a few uh, technical things with my computer, so it's, I've um, it's not hopefully gonna it's not gonna crash quite as often. Uh, I think the deck was all right. It seems like a, a decent deck. I think game one he just he just had a flyer I couldn't deal with. Um, if I'd uh, remembered that one of my removal spells was Annihilating Glare, which is Sorcery Speed. I could have spent four life to draw a card with Staff of Completion. So I think if you're running Staff of Completion, you better know um, what what speed your spells are. <laughs> it's not it's no good uh, drawing the Sorcery Speed spell uh, in that your opponent's turn when you're about to die. So. Uh, yeah, so game one we lost to the flyer that got he got the um yeah he was upgrade he was uh, equipping it with the battle chair which was pretty cool. So it's a bit of an equipment and toxic deck we're up against and uh, if we look I actually do I do have the prosthetic ejector I'm not playing it I'm, I find it hard to evaluate this card but it certainly did a great job for him in that game. Um, as I say, I'm paranoid about playing cards that aren't creatures and aren't removal spells, because they they become useless without creatures. So you can probably get a play, a get away with running one of these, but that's funny. I thought I dropped a Postle of Invasion. Oh no, I did that in the uh, sideboarding phase, didn't I? I dropped the Postle of Invasion. Okay, well... Uh, the other good piece of news, the game did not crash. We got through an entire match without crashing, so that's something. Maybe I've fixed it. Going to 60 millihertz may have done the trick. But, yeah, obviously not ideal uh, going 0-2, but we've got enough gems for one more sealed... Uh, I think I will. I'll go for it. 
I'm not going to save them up for um, the next Mastery Pass. I think hopefully I could get enough gems for the Mastery Pass in um, Phyrexia Quick Draft. Uh, I've now done research into the instance and flash speed spells in this set, so I'm a little bit more prepared. I know, I know what to expect. That's the reason I seem to spend a, a long time deliberating is I'm not even I'm trying to remember what instance there are in the set. So if I just uh, have a have a read through of that before each uh, each match each event, that is probably going to help quite a bit. I might look at a tier list as well. It's interesting to see what other people's ev evaluations are. I wonder if uh, how how good prosthetic injector is according to other people. That could be quite interesting. Uh, anyway, I think that is the video. So uh, thanks for watching.